So the first lesson, uh, we will look at mold and uh, core design, also the cavity layout. The most important concept within this lesson is going to be how do you decide the orientation and parting design. Orientation and parting design are very important lessons. So we look at uh, what are different types of tooling. We look at uh, the orientation and parting line, how to design the course, and finally how to design the mold core design layout, including the gaps, what are the critical gaps, and so on. <coughs> okay. Now, if we look at different casting processes in terms of tooling, we will find they are either one step or two step or three step process. Okay. If you look at die casting, it's a one step process. You just make the tooling in the mold, you pour the metal and you pour the casting. If you take, uh, and then I'll put a color code here. So whatever is a gray color is a metal dye. If it's a, a blue or a brown, it is a dispensable or expendable tooling, tooling element. If you look at sand casting, it's a two-step process. You got to first make a pattern on cold cold box, using which you make a sand mold and then you pour metal into it. So now, remember that the more the steps we have, the more the damage the variations can have. If you take investment casting, it's a three-step process. You first make a die in which you make the wax, around the wax you make the shell, and in the shell you pour the metal. So three steps, each step can have its own damage variations. That's why dimensional control in investment casting is very difficult, although it's supposed to give us good dimensional characteristics. Now, if you have semi-permanent mold, you have again a complication here. You have metal die in which you can have a sand. Die. The combination of that is physically a semi-permanent mold uh, GDC form. So we go to, we look at the basic concept of tooling. So in, in uh, to look at tooling from a CAD perspective, it's a series of transformations. <coughs> Let's say part is a positive shape, solid tooling. To create that positive shape, you need to create a negative shape. So it is a geometry transformation of minus. Okay. Now, to create the cavity, you need a positive shape, which is a pattern. Of course, pattern with certain changes like parting line and allowances and graph. Supposing part has a negative shape, like a cavity, like a hole. To create the hole, which is a negative shape, I need a positive shape, which is a core. But of course, to put the core in the mold cavity, I need a support, otherwise it will fall down. Okay. And then to make that uh, core and the core support area, I can combine union this core body with the pattern body, which gives me the pattern with the core print. The core print which creates a hole in the cavity, mold cavity to place the core. And if I uh, subtract this core, entire core, from a solid shape, I get the core box. So it's possible theoretically to create programs which will automatically create from part to core to core box and from part to pattern. There are several programs existing in the world which can do that, at least interactively, semi, semi automatically. Here is an example of a real life uh, part and the uh, open drag pattern for pattern the pattern is in two pieces. It can be put on a plate to so create the mold cavity. And to create the, the negative feature in the part, you need a core. And to create the core, which is in sand here, you need a core box. So gray is again metal and brown is sand here. So these are a series of transformations. It looks very easy here. But if you in real life, creating these shapes are, are not very easy. In fact, a good tool maker is, they say, worth is weight in gold. It's very difficult to find a good tool in here, especially dye, dye designers and so on. And here is the example of, uh, of a metal die, metal die, okay? which is, uh, as you can see, it is pretty complicated. In fact, I remember now one, uh, there was one, G, uh, I think, uh, Lakshmi Metal Works tool room in Coimbatore, I visited once. And in the morning, they were doing uh, judo karate. They were learning judo karate. There. And I asked, what is to do with judo karate and tool making? So they said, no, no, the, the Devadas who was the head of the company. No, this is a very precision kind of a skill. We need both mental concentration as well as physical skill. So this, this helps them to develop that kind of skill. And they say our students get a job placement in the first year, second year itself to Australia, Singapore, other places. I said, wow, that is better than I understood. Okay. So good tool makers are really rare and, and what really worth everything that they can design. Okay, now it starts introducing a concept of the draw direction is a starting point of orientation and parting line. If you look at this uh, mold and the pattern in the mold, okay, you are 
after breaking the mold, we'll be drawing the pattern along this vertical direction. Okay? If a core is there, and you place the core in the mold, you might have a horizontal in the vertical movement. Depends on say, the sand casting, sand mold, or metal mold. And then after placing the core, you're going to put the top of the mold. So these are the direction of movements of different mold elements. And mold elements here mean either the core or a dry or a core in this case. Okay. And finally, the assembled mold, which has your mold with the cavity, you are going to use it for your core in the middle. Okay. That is the basic concept of your uh, elements or segments of a mold. Now the things get a bit of complication. And uh, uh, listen very carefully. Here. On the left side, you see the part with a side blind mold, which I want to create. And then on the right side, you see the bottom half of the mold in which you are going to create this part. Now, we have colored um, in orange the surface of contact between the lower mold and the upper mold. So, brown area, uh, orange area is where the top half of the mold and the bottom of the mold will come in contact with each other. That we call as the parting surface. Parting surface between cope and drag. In case of dye also we say between moving half and pixel half or the left half and right half. Now, what is interesting is, if you see the yellow area there, which is also we are calling it as a parting surface. It is a surface of contact between the dry and the core print. We call that also as a parting surface. In fact, parting surface is anything where there is a contact between any two mold segments. And the two mold segments could be either cope and dry, and or drag and core or core and core. So you have three parting surfaces. Now the concept here is the intersection of a mold parting surface with the component surface is what is parting line. Okay. This is a new way of representing parting line. And this gives you very clean definitions. It works in all kinds of cases including your core assembly. And this something is can be computed and automated. Right. So what you see here again, the red line uh, or the red uh, uh, boundary line, okay. what you see here and you see the line on the part surface as well as you see the line around the hole. How do you get the line around the hole? That line is nothing but the intersection of your, that line again is in two halves, the top, top half circle and bottom half circle. The bottom half circle you get by intersection of the core drag parting surface with the component surface. And the top circle you will get from the core core parting surface intersecting with the component surface. Now you can say why are we taking so much trouble for defining parting line like this. Okay? But this first of all takes care of one major flaw in the normally defined parting line that if you see parting line from the side view here, it will show a line in the air on the in your home. If you see a side view of the, of the parts, of, the, of this part, and look at traditional definition of parting lines, you'll see a line going straight, horizontal all around. So part of the parting line is hanging in the air. Now you can say, what is wrong with that? Okay. But I'll tell you in a minute why this definition makes a lot of sense. The first uh, property of this, this kind of definition of parting line is that it neatly divides the component surface into separate contiguous regions each produced by a single mold segment. So it divides this whole region into the entire part surface divided into three regions. One region is your top region, okay, which is C. Second region is your bottom region, which is D. And third is your H region. And you can walk around in any region without crossing a boundary. You don't have to go to India to India by crossing Pakistan. You can go to any part of India without crossing any borders. Okay. So if you see here neatly, the entire C is produced only by core, entire D area is produced only by drag, and the entire H area is produced only by the core. Okay. First of all, it is a little more scientific and logical. But then practically it makes a lot more sense also if you look at the second problem. Anywhere you have parting line, you see a flash. And those who are industry will know that you see a flash around the core hole also. So I can actually now define the flash then flash perimeter and then evaluating parting lines from different considerations. Make sense? Okay, nice. You don't see this in books. Alright. Okay. Now, 
we have our complication functions. What is called as undercuts. Undercuts in casting is very different from undercuts in machine. What you have here is, if you are a part in this draw direction in particular, and if you try to withdraw the, either the cast, uh, pattern from the mold or a finished part from a metal die, either way, you have a problem that these regions hinder your withdrawal of the part or pattern from the mold. Okay. How do they handle that? They handle that by putting a side board. A core which is placed after the uh, cavity is built, and then you later on you break the core, or in case of a metal die, you withdraw the core sideways so you can remove the part from the mold. So undercuts always, that is for external undercuts, you can also have internal undercuts, okay, where you have some undercuts like that, and then you take care of that by making the core a little more complex. So you can have external undercuts or internal undercuts. Either way, I, I either need additional cores or I need more complicated cores. In either case, the cost and the life in the foundry gets worse. Okay. So let us now define what really what do we really want in a mold mold design. And we will show you with a simple example how different combinations of orientation and parting line can be analyzed. The main goal here is to make sure that we get the uh, we we can we can design the mold elements such that we minimize the number of mold elements, minimize the shape complexity of the mold elements, and also deviation from the original geometric intent, or increase the geometric fidelity of the part, design part, and your cast part. Okay, there are three basic goals when you design the, the your mold. Because every mold element adds to my cost, adds to my my time in the productivity in the in the, the foundry and adds to geometrical deviations. So I want to minimize the number of mold elements. But I can't have very complicated mold elements either. So I should also reduce the complexity of mold elements. And finally, whatever I do, I have to make sure that geometric deviation is minimal. So let's look at, so there are three ways of doing that. How do I minimize number of elements, mold elements? I reduce my, minimize my undercuts. How do I reduce, we'll see in examples all through all this. Okay, first step is minimize undercuts. Either by tooling design or parting. Number two, how do you reduce complexity? Try to have as much of flat parting as possible. A step parting or a contour parting always makes make life difficult for tool manufacturers as well as your foundry tool. And third thing is the draft, which is applied to make uh, to make it easy for pattern withdrawal of power part withdrawal. Minimize the amount of draft because the draft volume is additionally my deviation from my original level. So let's see an exact simple example. For this part, if I assume my my draw direction is vertical, you will find if I have a flat parting line, you immediately see that I need a separate core for the undercut on the side. I anyway have two moldless segments, so top core and cope and drag anyway I need it. I anyway need a full core for the central hole, through hole, that is unavoidable. But then Unfortunately, because there is a side undercut, I also need additional core, which is number four. So I have four mold segments here. Okay. Now, can I do something here itself? Supposing, okay, before that, I also want to worry about draft. There is a long, straight, parallel face. I need to apply draft. The red area represents my additional volume, which if the customer doesn't accept, I have to machine and supply to which is additional cost. So one choice I can do is, instead of a flat parting line, I can have a step parting line. By step parting line, I am eliminating the side core, which was for under. Okay, But my parting line now becomes more complex. So rule number one was minimize number of elements, which are satisfied in number two. But rule number two was minimize the complexity of mold elements, which is now not satisfied in the second option, which is B. So I can now try a third one, as you are saying. I can turn the part and assuming the draw direction is still vertical, I have now a flat parting line, I do not have an undercut and on top of that if you see draft, I do not have a long tall face, so draft volume also will be less than the previous. Of course life is never so simple that you have one solution which is perfect, you try one solution you have some other problem, finally as in life, as in engineering you have to compromise on certain things. Only thing engineers do not use the word compromise, they say we optimize. But optimize and compromise mean the same thing at the end of the time. Optimize is little more with intelligence, is little more weightage, you really prioritize things. Right? 
once in a while you get a beautiful solution. That's why we say it's beautiful. When everything is beautifully optimized, and you see that it's a perfect solution. So here are some examples of parting lines of real life plastics. And of course, you can decide to part any, any component in different ways. So the solution which you see here only is one of the many options that we have. Okay. So here you see a through hole on the, at the end. So there anyway you need a um, through, through hole, a core. You see a pocket on the left side. And you could do it by separate side core. Okay. And also pocket on the top, which you could either have a separate core, or you can do it as part of the core itself. And the same component is shown in two views. So you can see how the parting line goes around in the front side and the back side. <coughs> this is one way of parting. Second is, look at this example. This one in the front has several small, small pockets, all of which will form undercuts. And assuming we want to make the casting in the same orientation with the uh, vertical draw direction. The question is, should I make a separate core for each of those pockets, or do I combine all of them into single core, which makes more sense? Because we've seen yesterday that number of cores you want to minimize. So have a single core for combining all of them. Okay. And of course, a through core in the middle, and maybe a side core on the uh, going. But then you cannot have side core going all around, not very easy. So you can have split the side core into maybe two side cores. Remember, each core has to be made into a core box. And you have to remove the core from the core box. So you have to worry about undercut in that point. What about this component? Okay. Several side pockets, so you can have several side pockets if you want. Okay. And then you can have one core from the bottom and maybe one through hole, two core from the top to bottom. Okay. What about this one? Several side pockets. Now these side pockets, which you see the in your pins, they are not forming any undercuts. The ribs here in this picture, they are not forming any undercuts. So theoretically, you do not need any side force for this. I mean, you can have wherever this undercut is there, but it is a front view of this, there are no undercuts. The question is, should I make it directly in a sand mode or should I have a core for this? And here is where one more rule kicks in. Remember that whenever I have a tall face, I need to apply bra. Now, the purpose of this pin is to cool. The moment you apply draft and make it thick, the cooling effectiveness comes down. And you do not want to machine, machining this will be like that. So in a case where you do not want to machine, you do not want to apply draft, there also you have an option of putting a side -tool. So you can put the entire ribs area as a side -tool. Okay, there's an additional reason why you make a side -tool. not just for undercut, but also for avoiding machining and avoiding draft. Okay, so what we learned in this lesson was, Mold parting is one of the first key decisions in casting design. The orientation and parting are, are brotherly uh, or sisterly decisions. Two sides of the same point. Orientation decides parting, parting decides orientation because undercuts come into picture. Okay. And a perfect parting is one which minimizes undercuts, minimizes shape complexity, and minimizes your draft or volume issue.